So what is it with this 28-day shelf life rule once a peptide has been reconstituted? Is it true or is it actually bullshit? Well, the answer is yes and no. And I think the reason there's so much confusion around this is because people don't understand where that number actually comes from and what it's really measuring. So that 28-day number comes from pharmacy regulations called USP 797. And USP 797 is specifically answering the question of how long it will take until bacteria in the vial grow to a level that becomes dangerous. It's assuming you're using bacteriostatic water with benzyl alcohol as a preservative, and it's saying that over 28 days with multiple needle punctures, the infection risk reaches a level that pharmacies consider unacceptable. But that 28-day rule has nothing to do with whether your peptide is still working. As an example, semaglutide has actual FDA data showing it's chemically stable for 56 days when refrigerated. And Sermorellin has compounding pharmacy data showing 60 to 90 days of stability under the right conditions. But then you have peptides like CJC1295 and ipamorelin, where the research suppliers recommend using them within 14 to 21 days because they start losing potency faster than other compounds. So the 28-day number you keep hearing was designed to answer the question of when does this vial become an infection risk? And it was never designed to answer the question of when does this peptide stop working? And the problem with research peptides is they didn't go through the same stability testing that pharmaceuticals do. Nobody funded a 90-day degradation study on your BPC-157 vial. So that 28-day number gets applied to everything as a default, even though for some peptides it's way too conservative and for others it's not conservative enough. The other thing you have to understand is there are four things that destroy peptides, and those are heat, light, oxygen, and moisture. And heat is probably the biggest one because a peptide sitting on your counter is degrading about four times faster than one in your refrigerator. So the shelf life is the floor for microbial safety, but your storage habits are what actually determine whether you get what you paid for. But if you do want the full breakdown on how to store specific peptides properly, I put together a complete guide inside my free community. All you have to do to get access is just comment the word school with a K below, and I'll send you a link to join. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.